Hello, book lovers, and welcome to Authors Love Bookstores presented by A Mighty Blaze. My name is Kimberly Hensel Lawrence, and I'm your host today. If you're watching live with us on Facebook, feel free to post a question in a comment below the broadcast, and we'll get to it later in our conversation. I am thrilled today to have one of my favorite authors with us, Lily King. Lily is the award winning author of five novels. Her most recent novel is Writers and Lovers, which just came out in March. I adored this book, and we're going to talk about it. Um, her previous novels include Euphoria, which won the Kirkus Award, the New England Book Award, and was a finalist for the National Book Critics Award. Euphoria was named one of the top 10 best books of 2014 by so many different lists. It's a must read if you haven't read it already. Her other novels include Father of the Rain, which was a New York Times editor's choice, a publisher, publisher's weekly best novel of the year, and a winner of both the New England Book Award for Fiction and the Maine Fiction Award. Lily's novels um, also include The English Teacher and The Pleasing Hour, both of which also won a number of awards, <laughs> and all of her novels have been translated um, into more than 20 languages. Lily, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So Lily is here with us today to talk about Writers and Lovers, but also to talk about one of her favorite independent bookstores. And you know we love bookstores here in A Mighty Blaze. And that store is Print, a bookstore, which can be found in Portland, Maine. And with us from Print is one of the co-owners, Emily Russo. Welcome, Emily. Thank you. We're so happy to have both of you. I'm so happy to be here. So. We're, gonna, we're definitely going to talk about the bookstore, but I want to take a moment to talk about Writers and Lovers. Um, this is one of my favorite books that I have read in the past year. I just, oh, I you. really loved it. I felt Me like, too. Right? <laughs> and I know so many people who love it. I felt, now I have never met Lily King before you know, five minutes ago, but mm -hmm. I felt at several times when I was reading this book that it was written for me. Did you feel like that, Emily? Like there yeah, I'm, but I, I am I am a sucker for, for any book that's uh, books about books, books about writers, like write more, 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 more. Can't just keep it coming, keep it coming. I love it, I love it. Yes, big yeah. fans right here. So, yeah. Lily, <laughs> for you. those of our viewers who have not yet had the opportunity to read Writers and Lovers, can you tell them a little bit about what it's about? I mean, Emily and I can do that, obviously, but we'd love to hear from you. Sure. Um, let's see. It's about a uh, 31 year old Casey Peabody. And when we meet her, she has just arrived in Massachusetts, $70,000 in debt, you know, completely broke, um, no health insurance, a broken heart, grieving her mother who died over the winter very, very suddenly on vacation. Um, and she has been carrying around for the past six years, a novel that she's trying to finish. Um, and so she arrives in Massachusetts and gets a, a terrible um, room at the side of a garage, an old potting shed room, and she gets a job at a fancy restaurant. Um, and then, you know, we sort of follow her as she struggles to, to, to figure out the rest of her life. You know, she's really come to that uh, point in her young adulthood where it just seems like there's a big abyss out in front of her and she's trying to get over it to the rest of her life and she doesn't really know how and so the novel is, is really kind of about that existential moment in your life when you're trying to figure out how do I be a real grown-up you know and and pursue my dreams not let go of them but also support myself and also, you know, maybe try to find a partner, you know, she meets these two guys and they make her life even messier and more confusing. And so, you know, the novel is just kind of her getting through that time in her life. Would you guys say that was the right um, description? <laughs> yeah. Yes, the fans agree. Yes. Uh, I think it's, it's, that this, it's this great story of a woman at a crossroads, you know, making these choices. Do I follow my art or do I abandon it? Do I love this? Do I commit to this one person or this other person? And you can sort of see how the path would be different depending upon these choices. Mm -hmm. And we don't often have the ability to see the path, the consequence of the choice, right? But it's so clear in Casey's life, she has these opportunities and who will she become? It's very, it's a great read. Mm, thank you. And viewers can purchase your book from Print a Bookstore, which is a perfect segue into 
talking about your store, Emily. Mm. So you are based in Portland, Maine. Now, mm-hmm. uh, we're all New Englanders here, so we know Portland, but perhaps some of our viewers are not. Can you tell us a little bit about the community that you serve? Sure. Um, so I am, I grew up in Waterville, Maine, um, which is about an hour and a half north. So I'm still relatively new to Portland. I left Maine, um, you know, Dakota College in Pennsylvania, and then promptly ended up in in Brooklyn um, and only moved to Portland about five years ago. So Lily can correct any misstatements that I, that I make. And I would say, you know, up until about 10, 15 years ago, you know, Portland was a small city. Um, certainly um, residents, you know, artists, fishermen. Um, it was a predominantly um, middle class, lower middle class community. And over the past 15 years, it's really changed. Um, a lot of people from Brooklyn and Boston who can no longer afford the city are moving up here. Um, but also in the past 10 or 15 years, there has been um, a lot of new arrivals coming, um, immigrants coming from, um, from Africa and who have settled in, in Portland. So Portland's also becoming a very diverse community, which is, which is fantastic. Um, we are not, and Lily, again, correct me if I'm wrong, we're not officially a sanctuary city, but we are certainly one that, that acts that way um, as, as, best we, as best we can. Um, a lot of retirees also moving up into the community. So it's, it's very different from, from what it was um 15 years ago and in both really exciting ways and also in some in some pretty challenging ways and your bookstore has been open for about four years right yes yeah, so we'll be celebrating our four-year anniversary in uh, in november and wow. what made you want to open a bookstore uh well, oh god this could be like an uh, this could the answer could take up the entire show um <laughs> No, I, you know, I've always loved bookstores and um, I graduated from college and and immediately moved to to Brooklyn and ended up on the agenting side of things and didn't really, it just wasn't for me. I didn't really like it. Um, I I think there are, you know, agents really love the thrill of the hunt. They want to find the thing that they love 110%. Um, And I hate saying no to people. I really felt like I was spending my day rejecting things and I hated it. And I kept going back to the idea of, of working in a bookstore. And I moved up to be with my now husband in Western Massachusetts and got a job as an events coordinator um, there. And I got to say yes all the time. And I got to, to put books in people's hands, you know, even if it wasn't something that was, you know, the top of my list, if I thought it was going to be perfect for you, then, then, then that made my day. And it became pretty clear pretty quickly, um, even as I accepted the events coordinator's position at, at the Odyssey, that I wanted to do what my boss was doing, which was to curate the selection and, and bring in the books and to uh, pick what actually comes into the store. So um, four years later, I decided to, to open up my own bookstore. And what's been, um, you've had quite a year. The past couple of months, your booksellers yeah. have been <laughs> yes. um, complicated, <laughs> unexpected. Yeah, it has been your biggest lesson about book selling in the past. Uh, just how adaptable you have to be. I mean, I think we've changed our business model probably every what feels like every 72 hours. Um, you know, we, we met, went, yeah, we went from making the decision to close the doors, not knowing um, what was going to happen in the next two weeks to um, predominantly moving everything to curbside and then, you know, a week curbside pickup that is and then moving everything then we had to shut down the, the store completely um, as as the cases got worse, and we were just shipping things out. And you know, all of our staff moved to to work from home while my business partner Josh and I did all of the shipping out of the store. And then Portland decided all of a sudden that oh, actually we weren't allowed to ship anything at all for a week. You know, we had to shut down our store our store completely, and so we had to become activists and 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 you know fight against that. And that took up several you know several days of reversing that position and then, you know, making, again, making the choice to, to reinstate curbside. So it felt like every 72 hours we were, we were confronted with a, with a new challenge that we, that we had to deal with. Um, and, you know, our store has become a, has become a warehouse now with the, the number of bags and empty boxes. And we look like a fulfillment center rather than the bookstore that we, <laughs> that we miss. Oh. Now Lily, it, print is your local bookstore. It is. It's just, I think it's about five blocks from my house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really local. You know, we we just moved to Portland a couple of years ago. And so, um, and Emily was already here. And it's funny because this is the only neighborhood I wanted to live in. And I would say about 
35 to 50% of that decision was because there was this fantastic bookstore that I could walk to, you know, I mean, that, that is a dream, you know, just to have a, a bookstore that you can walk to. Um, so I, I, I love, I've loved the store from the moment it opened. Um, and I've known Emily before that. And I sort of, I, I got to see it all unfolding. And then, and then it turns out that she's just a fabulous bookseller. And she is a fabulous hire of other people because everybody who works in a bookstore is so fantastic. And you walk in and they know what you like and they know what to recommend. I mean, you know, honestly, Emily could tell me anything. All she has to do the way she talks about books, you know, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Get out my credit card, you know. <laughs> Um, and, and it's just like, I, I just love walking in there. Uh, it, it's just a, a great, a great feel and great customers. And it just feels like home, you know, which is what you really want in a bookstore. Mm, that's a great compliment. Feels like home. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What, um, have you had a book launch at Prin, or have you attended a memorable book event at the store that you can share with our viewers? many um okay. yes i've had you know ever since it opened i've had all my launches there i've had done a number of other readings i've been you know in conversation with writers who come to visit and um and i've seen you know so many great writers come through you know you're you look sometimes you look at the list and you're like really like that writer is going to come to portland maine you know <laughs> really lily exciting. were you were you there for luis Reyes' event Luis no, Alberto no, Reyes. Oh, I missed that one. So this was, I think this is probably my favorite event of ours to date. Luis was in conversation. So Luis Alberto Orea wrote um, the house, among other things, the house of broken angels. And he, he did an event at, at print um, and was in conversation with my, with my dad, Richard Russo. And he ended the evening when my dad asked him to read for a little bit, he didn't read, he performed a chapter from memory. And it was the most extraordinary thing I have ever seen. It that was just book. wonderful. That book is so good. Yeah. And the book, yeah, the book is amazing. So yeah. <laughs> and the events at print are just, they're, you know, there's enough space so that, you know, mm -hmm. a number of people can, can be in there, but it's also just super intimate, you know, no matter where you are, you, you feel really close to the, to the writer and to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And there's just always a really great feeling in the room, you know, and that's something that you notice immediately when you have an event, you know, you get up to the podium and like, you feel this feeling and, and every single event is, is different. Um, but I feel like at print, you know, it's always just, it just, it just feels like everybody's talking, even though not everybody is talking, <laughs> but it feels like we're having a real conversation, whether, you know, you're the writer or you're in the audience. And, and then, you know, when we have, when they want to have a bigger, um, event you know there are other venues in town where where it moves to and so like that was one of the very last i had three events for this book yeah um print was the first one and it was at um mechanics hall which is a few blocks down the road and um you know we could fit a lot of people in there and, and that was such a uh i don't know i look back so fondly to that night you know because <laughs> i thought i was you know about to go on a on a three-month book tour and in fact it was a one-week book tour <laughs> yeah yeah so that was my favorite event so it was great but lily you've been doing a lot of book tour events via zoom yes i have i have yep. it all went virtual and, so and and that has been great i mean there's a lot of advantages to that i was just in the shower like you know 20 minutes ago so great. <laughs> <laughs> same so you're still wet <laughs> So definitely it's easier. And I imagine you get to go to some places that you might have physically not been able to go to just because of budget or time or whatnot. But yeah. definitely the sort of intimacy that you're describing that you are accustomed to at a print event, that's harder to do on Zoom. It is. It's not impossible, though. You know, mm -hmm. I definitely. I mean, especially I've been visiting book clubs a lot. Oh. And so if you just have a group of nine or 15 people, it, at first it felt really weird and uh, artificial, yeah. but you know, you get used to things. I mean, you know, we're so adaptable as creatures um, that really like 
I've had some really great times and I click off and I'm in such a good mood. I'm like, I've visited people, you know, like my little extroverted side has gotten a little influx of joy, you know? And I really, I've been surprised by that feeling because I really only thought that could happen in person. It's good to hear. So you said earlier that Emily can sell you anything. Um, yeah. I hope I'm, par I'm quoting that correctly. So <laughs> can you think of a book that Emily has recommended that you would love our viewers to try out or? Well, I remember, um, I mean, her one, Emily has a tattoo of a book on her arm. And so the way she speaks about this book is incredible. Um, it's Lauren Groff's um, edible, help me out. <laughs> delicate edible birds. Delicate edible birds. Sorry, sorry. Delicate. I, I never remember that quite right. But it's a brilliant book of short stories. And, and, uh, and you know, I, I'll be forever grateful to her for recommending that. Excellent. That's, yeah. Um, we actually just got an audience question for you, Lily, mm -hmm. about a book choice. So um, mm -hmm. the question is, I just finished reading a classic I should have read novel decades ago and never could admit to not reading. Mm. Um, what books do you have on your shelf that you have been meaning to read but just have never gotten around to actually reading? Oh. Emily, I want you to answer that one too as a book. Uh, yeah. So, oh, okay. Uh, it feels like such a confession, you know? I, 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 it's so funny. But Ulysses, I have not finished Ulysses. Um, and that's a, that's a big one that weighs on me. Also, Crime and Punishment. Mm. Those, those really, I mean, when, when, when uh, COVID hit, you know, really one of my first thoughts was, I am going to read those goddamn books. <laughs> Tells me. Um, but I haven't. I haven't, you know. So, and I'm now, I'm, uh, you know, it, it will happen someday, I think. Someday. Emily, what about you? As a bookseller, what's on? As a bookseller, oh gosh! In terms of in terms of classics, um, you know, I've I've never read Moby Dick, but I but you know, I'll call myself out here. I am woefully underread in in terms of um, authors like James Baldwin and Toni Morrison. I've probably read one of each of of their books, and I and I've been working you know, double time at the, at the store. So I've actually been doing less reading than I, than I normally um, get a chance to do. Um, but those are certainly two authors that I feel like I am um, woefully under, under read and, and want to um, read their entire um, collection of work. What are your customers buying? What kind of books are popular? Yeah, well, we kind of started off the pandemic with um, like uh, uh, Hillary um, or, for heaven's sakes, so I was about to say Hillary St. John Mandel. Hillary Mantel's um, uh, third book in the Wolf Trilogy uh, or the Wolf Hall Trilogy. Um, so we started off the pandemic with selling, again, a lot of classics. People wanted to read things like Ulysses and Moby Dick and The Plague, um, really big classic media things that they never got a chance to, chance to read. And of course now um, with um, everything that's happening with the protests and the Black Lives Matter March, we're selling a lot, thankfully, selling a lot of anti-racism titles. So Dr. Ibram Kendi's Stamped from the Beginning and uh, Iwa Jama, oh, um, sorry, I'm gonna make sure I get her name pronounced correctly. Um, uh, Ejioma Oluo's uh, So You Want to Talk About Race and um, Jason Reynolds' adaptation of Dr. Ibram Kendi's um, Stamped from the Beginning. Uh, white fragility, um, white rage. We're selling, um, we're selling a lot of those titles as people try to um, to learn and, and better themselves. And I know that a lot of these books have been difficult to get because everyone's mm -hmm. trying to buy them. Yeah. So I imagine being a bookseller these past couple of weeks, especially when people are desperate to get books, has been stressful. Yeah, it's been yes, yes, it's been it's been stressful. I would say 99% of our of our customers have been more than understanding. Um, but yeah, when when the nation really gets together and, and starts, you know, pur purchasing things on mass, and everybody wants this one book um, at the same time, and publishers haven't met that demand. Um, and some people get cranky that they can't get the book that they want um, the second that they want it. Um, that has led to, to some stress and to some disappointed customers. But for the most part, I would say, you know, 99% of our customers just say, you get it to me when you get it to me. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Lily, a lot of our viewers in the Authors Love Bookstore series are writers themselves. So mm -hmm. definitely book lovers, but also writers. And so they're always curious to hear from writers like yourself. Are you able to write during mm -hmm. this time? 
um, obviously you're on a book tour, so that's a. That's I know a, exactly. That's that's my excuse right now is that I'm on a book tour, even though it's right here in my study, um, where I should be writing. Uh, I have not written very much. I just actually, I just got found, we moved and I could not find my typewriter. And uh, I suddenly spied it in my husband's office, like in a little corner and he didn't know it was there and I didn't know it was there. I was like, there it is. So anyway, I just wrote a scene a couple of days ago on that typewriter and I'm really, I, it was so great to kind of break the membrane. I, I, um, I'm on contract for a collection of short stories and so I've sent 13 off to my editor and we're going to talk about them tomorrow. Uh, and then I have five more that I have to um, kind of get up to speed. But then I have this novel that, you know, is, um, is I really thought that I was going to throw out the idea, but it just like keeps coming back to me and back to me. And so I keep getting ideas. And, and uh, anyway, all of this to say is uh, no, I've barely been writing at all, but um, every Monday, Every week I tell myself, next Monday, I'm gonna start in. And uh, that uh, car, the, the whole routine thing that I need hasn't really, really kicked in. But I still am kind of giving myself a break because I'm not very good at being extroverted and introverted at the same time. And it, and it seems like I have to get through, you know, all of the events before I can really like sink down into my regular writing self. Do you write your novels on a typewriter, manual typewriter? I've only written one short story on a typewriter, um, but it was really fun. And just writing that scene a couple of days ago was really fun. I, usually I write by hand with a pencil and a notebook, um, but it, it felt fun to have a, a new way of doing it. I felt, I've, I mean, I, I know that when I write by hand with a pencil, I write differently than when I write on the computer. Mm. And when I write on that typewriter, it's different still. And uh, I don't know, I, it, it's, it's fun to be excited about the means of writing, you know, cause writing is kind of boring. I, I just was, my husband's a painter and he has a studio around the corner and, uh, I just was in there and I watched him he, like he's listening to music he like puts this like gray purple line on the canvas this huge painting and I'm like shit that is a nice <laughs> activity why I was going up to here you know to like do stuff and I was like oh, writing is so boring in comparison to listening to music and standing up and like bringing in a brightly lit room and I have to pull down all the blinds and I don't know so um, we're getting a question from the audience. What kind of typewriter do you use? Oh, you well, uh, let's see. Lovers? It's a Royal Deluxe. A Royal Deluxe? Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's, you know, something I got online. Excellent. <laughs> Lily, what would you like to ask Emily about the store? What is it that you want our viewers to know that make, what makes print so special? And you, how can we build excitement for the store from our viewers so they go out and buy some books from print? Um, let's see. Well, God, I have so, so many questions for you. Um, I, I really am curious, like how, you know, so it has such a great atmosphere and, and most of that is because of the people, you know, who are staffing the, you know, your, your, your coworkers. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering, how do you find them? How do you, you know, it must be really hard to hire people uh, in that way. And I wonder like, how do you, how do you put those pieces together to, to make it such a warm place, you know? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, and one that I feel like we're, you know, our, our customers, or I'm sorry, customers, our, our employees are, are absolutely um, amazing and we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. Um, I would say, you know, loving books is not enough. You know, we, we want, always want to make sure that we, that we hire people that um, can communicate their love of books to, to customers that actually enjoy talking to, to other people. It's, it's simply not enough to, to love books, to work in a bookstore. You really also have to love people. Um, mm -hmm. So that's definitely a quality that we, that we look for. Um, and, you know, people who really, who really want to try and, and, and make this, um, you know, books, a, their career, you know, it doesn't have to be, 
you know, long term, it's you know, book selling is a great stepping stone to other um, to other positions in within the industry, whether it be publishing or becoming a writer, a writer themselves. But we we look for for people who want nothing more than communi- than to communicate their their love of of writing and their love of reading to to other people. I got um, fired from the Harvard bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if you've ever had to fire anyone. Uh, no, no, we have never had to fire anyone. Um, and I, I hope that day never comes. I sh- I'm sure it will. It happens to everybody. But I mean, we just, we're so blessed with our staff. And, um, you know, it, the, vi- the coronavirus has been really, really hard. But one of the things that I am, I am most proud of is the fact that we have not had to let anybody go. Um, not every bookstore has been able to say that for, for one reason or another. And it's really the support of the Portland community that has allowed us to be able to retain everybody. You know, Josh and I have been in, in the store fulfilling the majority of the web orders, but the volume of the web orders coming in means that, you know, our, our children's manager, Stephanie Hines, has been able to work from home and do a daily story hour. It means that she's been able to work with uh, schools getting books into kids' hands to make sure that kids are able to read throughout the school year and throughout the summer when libraries are still closed. It wow. means that our events coordinator, Gracie, is able to, was able to learn Zoom at the drop of a hat, you know, working with the Main Writers and Publishers Alliance and still being able to um, to pull off amazing events. And it's, it's the community support that's allowed us to make sure that we are still an active part of the community and that we're able to still be a part of the conversation, you know, working with folks like the Main Writers and Publishers Alliance and the schools and the Indigo Arts Alliance right now, which is putting on the wonderful Ashley Bryan, beautiful Blackford, Blackbird Festival. You know, we're still able to be a part of the community conversation because people are continuing to to support us by purchasing books through us and that's allowed us not just to survive this moment but to um to, but to continue to thrive in that moment that may that may not be the best phrasing but we're, we're still able to do what we do um and do it well because uh, people still support us and we're able to do um be able to do more for our community because of the community support of us that's great do you think that you'll change anything about the bookstore based upon what you've learned the past couple of months? It'll be interesting to see how um, how we continue to work with platforms like Zoom. I think there I think there is a little bit of a Zoom exhaustion. Um, I think as people as the summer hits and people are starting to go outside a little bit more and and sometimes maybe taking a little bit more risks in terms of in terms of traveling. Um, I think we're seeing a, a little bit of a the dip in interest in, in Zoom events, um, but I do think it really does open up um, so many possibilities in terms of, of being able to, to have writers come, you know, come virtually to print that we, um, we may not have access to otherwise based on, you know, publisher budget or any, any number of things. I think that's just kind of opened up a, a new world in terms of in terms of events, but it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how Zoom continues to be a part of our, our everyday life post pandemic. Don't you think part of that dip though is summer in Maine? I mean, I feel like- Yeah, absolutely. Things thin out in yeah. the summer. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Lily, a comment for you, not a question, a comment, <clears throat> which is your writers and lovers single-handedly brought me through the early days of COVID-19 19 terror. So much heart and wisdom and pitch perfect prose. It was like a giant hug. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's like a giant hug right back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're coming to the end of our time, which breaks my heart, but uh, <laughs> uh, we are. Um, what do you want our viewers to think about um, in terms of uh, your store as, as they go forward? Is there, do you have a newsletter that they should sign up for? Do you have a big event coming up that online that you want them to check out? What do you want to leave them with Emily as an action item other than oh. to go buy Lily's books? Other than to go buy Lily's books. Um, yes, please sign up for, sign up for our newsletter. Um, we have, um, a ton of events coming up on uh, actually two, one tonight with, with Lily King and, uh, and Anne Hood this evening. And then Lily's in conversation with uh, Jay Courtney Sullivan uh, later 
later this month. But um, also, I'm going to make another plug for the Indigo Arts Alliance, which is doing a wonderful festival called uh, the Beautiful Blackbird Festival, which highlights a lot of um, black artists and writers, black creators. Um, and it's just going to be, it's an ongoing festival through the summer. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So, so take a look on our website for more information on, on that. And then it will link you directly to the Indigo Arts Alliance. And they're, they've just put in an incredible amount of work into this wonderful festival. And we, we can't say enough good things about it. Excellent. Lily, any last things you want to tell readers about your upcoming book tour or your ongoing book tour? Anything? Um, I guess, you know, I, I, most of my virtual events are, are on my website, lilykingbooks.com. Um, everything's gone virtual. So, <laughs> uh, most of them have been changed. Some of them are uh, questionable in November. Um, that, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I think. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. Set honors all mine. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> So excited to, have, to thank you, Kimberly, to speak with you and Emily to speak with you. So, viewers, a reminder to check out print online at printbookstore.com and to learn more about writers and lovers and Lily's other novels. Go to lilykingbooks.com and join us here next week for another edition of Authors Love Bookstores. And until then, be well and keep reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>